Secretary Manise, I understand that your previous job as Director of MIT uh, Energy Initiative, you played a major role in examining the impacts of energy development on, and, and on water use and vice versa. So I am sure you already know that this is a significant issue for my State, and I appreciate your responsiveness to my recent letter to you on the subject. But can you briefly describe the Department's current activities to address the critical link between energy and water, and are there further actions you plan to take in this area now that you are the boss? <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, the, the energy water nexus is, uh, is clearly one of, of uh, greatly increased attention, and rightly so, because uh, this is a, uh, a very, very challenging problem. In fact, it is often not recognized that approximately half of the United States water withdrawals are just for thermal power plants uh, alone. Uh, and of course, water issues have become very prominent in hydrocarbon production. So at the Department, uh, we have a task force that has been put together on, the, on energy and water. Um, they have been uh, uh, developing ideas. There are some collaborations, for example, with EPA and DOI uh, sp specifically on the water issues with, uh, with uh, hydrofracking. Uh, the, uh, the issues of addressing lower, energy, lower water use, particularly as drought uh, comes across uh, uh, much of our country, are critical. I have asked our task force to develop a draft program plan for this fall that would give us an idea what might be a new direction that we could then discuss with, with members uh, and, of course, in, in the administration to see how we might shape a program uh, uh, more forcefully aimed at, aimed at energy and water. Thank you. Uh, as one of the Nation's most respected physicists, can you briefly describe how the uh, greenhouse gas emissions trap heat in Earth's atmosphere? Uh, okay, <laughs> I could use a blackboard then, but uh, uh, well, I mean, quite quite briefly, the uh, the issue is that uh, incoming sunlight, uh, uh, especially let's say in the visible range, obviously we see the sun, so that sunlight comes through to the earth, it's absorbed, it is then re-radiated uh, as infrared, and then certain molecules like carbon dioxide. Uh, uh, trap uh, that infrared radiation, and that creates the greenhouse effect, uh, which then leads leads to warming. And, th and this has been known. I, I might say this has been known since the 19th century. What what are the major risks to our nation if we don't reduce our greenhouse uh, gas emissions? And are there any increased risk if we delay the action? Well, uh, certainly, I think the the risks of of global warming uh, are are very very considerable. Uh, of course, this does it is an issue in the end of I should of global uh, global greenhouse gas emissions uh, with an increase uh, and uh, continued warming. Uh, we will we are seeing, of course, already uh, indicators such as the dramatic effects on on sea ice, but also uh, I think here in this country. Uh, we are seeing statistically the expectations written down 20 years ago playing out, uh, such as uh, droughts, wildfires, uh, storm intensity uh, increases. Again, one can never assign any specific event to the warming, but statistically uh, it seems to be there. So, um, uh, and the problem is it is happening very very rapidly compared to historical natural cycles. Uh, also, I should have saw, talked about uh, 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 sea level rise, which then couples with storms to have storm surges, the kind of thing that we saw with Sandy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.